Do not give your pets fish oil unless you're doing these five things. We're having a brand new webinar on omega-3 supplements for dogs and cats and you're invited. Should you be giving them or not? What you need to know about safety. We're having a special focus on allergies including my top natural remedies. You can click the link in the box below to sign up. The essential fatty acids are considered one of the most important supplements in veterinary medicine. They're really important for allergic skin disease, arthritis, cancer, organ dysfunction, brain health. But before you rush out and buy your dog or cat a fish oil supplement, there's a few things you should know. Number one, get an accurate diagnosis. Before you're using an omega-3 fatty acid to treat a condition in your dog or cat, ensure they have a condition that your dog or cats can respond to them. Does your dog really have allergic skin disease? Or does he or she have a mites or coptic mange? Maybe your itching dog or cat has a food allergy. First, you should be doing a proper food trial. You can do your own brief veterinary exam. I've got a bunch of different videos showing you exactly what to do at home. But it's first important to start it with the basics, like exactly what is going on with your dog, what is going on with your cat. And then we're using whatever remedy is most appropriate. And maybe it is an essential fatty acid, but you need to know first. Number two, you need to be aware of toxins in fish oil. So here's the big problem in a nutshell. We've contaminated the ocean with toxins. These toxins, they accumulate in fish. The salmon, for instance, they're much higher up the food chain. So unfortunately, they have much higher levels of mercury, PCBs, these persistent organic pollutants, which are just remaining in the ocean. They're concentrating the fat of these fish. As long ago as 2004, the US FDA, they released a report cautioning against young children, pregnant women eating any excess amount of fish because of concerns about toxicity from mercury and these PCBs. Unfortunately, the majority of the omega-3 supplements for dogs and cats, they come from fish oil. And that same fish oil, it can be heavily contaminated. Some of the better companies, they're now testing for contaminants. A much better way to go about supplementing your dog or cat with a good quality omega-3 supplement, you're going to be using something like krill oil. It's much lower in the food chain, virtually no amount of detectable toxins. It's got high levels of the EPA and DHA, those beneficial omega-3 fatty acids. But if you're not using krill and you're using salmon oil, just ensure that this company is tested for level of contaminants. The third big point, so overlooked for so many supplements, it's absorption. It's so one thing to give your dog or cat a supplement. Oh, this is gonna be so good. It's gonna do so many things for them. But if their body can then not absorb that supplement in the intestinal tract, can't make its way to the cells, it's really not doing much of anything. Drum roll, and what could that be? So before you give your dog, your cat, an essential fatty acid supplement, you wanna make sure they have some food in their belly. And in particular, not just any food, you wanna make sure it's food that has some fat in it like this healthy safflower oil. That oil in the food, that can markedly increase absorption. Number four, you need to know when not to give the essential fatty acids. In some animals, they can cause GI upset. If your pet has a GI health condition, vomiting, diarrhea, don't be giving the EFAs at the same time. The single biggest side effect or reason why you would not be giving an essential fatty acid supplement if you have a dog or cat that has a bleeding disorder and or they're scheduled for surgery. They can delay clotting time. So if your dog is scheduled for a spay, ensure she's off that essential fatty acid supplement seven days before surgery. It is a fairly modest amount in terms of how it does affect clotting time, but I think it's important that you're aware of it because the last thing you want is your dog, your cat to be bleeding more than is necessary. There is a big fallacy. I used to say in veterinary practice, if a dog came in with pancreatitis, we know that can be related to fat metabolism. I would say never give these essential fatty acids. They potentially do more harm. Or say we had a cat in with fatty liver, hepatic lipidosis, the same thing. I'd say, get them off. Don't ever give them the essential fatty acids. Turns out that was incorrect suggestion and advice. And now the essential fatty acids, they're actually indicated for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. They're indicated for canine pancreatitis. The essential fatty acids are being beneficial because they are normalizing fat metabolism. But if your pet's scheduled for surgery, they happen to have a bleeding disorder, do not give the EFAs. Point number five, you need to be giving these EFAs the right dose for a long enough period of time before you can assess whether they're helping or not. So let's just talk about an animal that has an allergy, i.e. a dog with allergic skin disease. 
Your dog needs to be ingesting enough EPA and DHA over a long enough period of time before you can assess one, whether they're gonna decrease that level of inflammation and your dog needs to be itching less. This goes to giving an adequate dose of the essential fatty acids long enough. Adequate levels of EPA and DHA, you're looking at 500 milligrams of krill for 20 pounds of body weight daily. Based on EPA levels and levels of absorption, so that with many of the fish oil supplements, it could be upwards of 1,000 milligrams for 20 pounds of body weight daily. And you need to be giving it for a minimum of three months, that's 90 days, before you can realistically assess, is it benefiting my dog or not? Any dogs and cats, they can respond much quicker, but you need to go for that full 90 days. I personally have seen so many big benefits of the EFAs in our pets. So I really think they're one of the most important supplements and if your dog or cat is not on one, you should be considering it. But make sure you've got the right diagnosis, ensuring you're not giving your dog or cat extra toxins. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Energy Secrets of the five things you should be doing before you give your dog or cat an omega-3 fatty acid supplement. Click up there to subscribe if you've yet to do so and I encourage you to click the link in the box below to sign up for my brand new webinar. We're going to be covering some of the most common diseases in our dogs and cats, arthritis, cancer, allergies, and my top natural remedies.